Hi, I'm Greg Banaszak, and within this DVD, I'll be discussing and performing on this wonderful mouthpiece made by the De Jacques company um, that Donald Jaquith designed in 1959. Uh, there's a little bit of interesting history behind it because uh, the great clarinetist Andre Petard used to use this mouthpiece, the clarinet version of it, within the Paris Opera Orchestra. There's only one in existence currently. It's probably going into manufacturing as well. It's very, very unique. As you can see, uh, the ligature is built into the mouthpiece. Um, what I find interesting is just by changing this dial, uh, the rails can be raised and lowered. And what that does for the player, it, it you know, a lot, like a lot of the, the Jacques products, it doesn't change the world, but it gives you an added dimension of longevity with your reeds uh, for a softer reed and may create a little more firmness for articulation. I found it to be, um, you know, quite an attractive uh, a mouthpiece and application. And what really floors me, for lack of a better term, is that one would think this technology is something new from 2013. This was, it's all handmade, it's an, uh, w one basic piece, there's several small moving mo mobile parts, but this was designed uh, in the true genius of um, Don in 1959. So how I first came to try this mouthpiece was uh, on a tour in California, and several people basically said the mouthpiece cannot function, it would not work for years. I don't know how many years, quite frankly. And we were in a hotel lobby at the uh, NAM show. I did a few performances in California, and and uh, you know after hearing maybe two hours of it, um, and many other emails and phone calls that the mouthpiece cannot function, I simply says, "Well, I'm going to get my saxophone, put a reed on, and I just tried to play, play the mouthpiece in the hotel lobby, and the mouthpiece felt great. I didn't. I, I to this day I don't know what the misconception or the problems that other people came across." that um, forced them or made them feel to uh, state that the mouthpiece didn't function. For me, um, it was about seven o'clock in the evening. I played in the hotel lobby. Um, I just use, what I'm using now is a standard uh, Van Doren traditional blue box reed, number three. Um, I put the reed on the, the mouthpiece and, and just tightened it up and it feels great and it plays wonderful. Very dark in tune mouthpiece. Um, it um, it works wonderful. So I, I find it, again, quite interesting to have a mouthpiece that has uh, the ability to change the rails all so subtly um, uh, just by the, the, the turning of this screw. So uh, does it change the sound a little bit? Not as much as changing the sound, but it gives the player more of a perhaps an intimate feeling and it also allows what I've noticed in my uh, working with this mouthpiece in the past six months, it's still relatively new to me, that uh, a lot of longevity uh, with my reeds, meaning that if I have a great reed on, what would maybe start to dissipate or fall apart or you know, just fall by the wayside, wayside as all good reeds do, it seems to last a little bit longer. Not forever, but you know, I would say what an extra week or so and when you have a good read that makes you feel good, why not? So, um, what I'd like to do maybe is just play a little bit uh, and address any questions that, that some of you may have and um, just take it from there. So, in discussing maybe the technical aspects of this mouthpiece, and I'm not the best at uh, technical aspects with mouthpieces and saxophones, uh, so maybe that's a little advantageous in this situation um, because I try to play on anything and everything and make it sound the best I can. But with this mouthpiece, what I find, once again, just breaking down uh, how it functions, is the ligature is built in to the mouthpiece itself. It's not, it's not I don't want to take it apart right now because it's set up to play. Um, it's kind of locked in there. The holds the reed very firm. It's very natural. I think the whole De Jacques idea is to have their products as organic and natural as possible. So it's comfortable. It's it's 
part of you, an extension of you as a player. It's not, not something that's foreign. I also, when I was first informed about this having a die and things like that, I thought it might be, um, you know, a little awkward. I didn't know what to expect when it was being discussed over the phone. And the dial is, is it looks normal. Like, I've seen some mouthpieces larger than this. It's just a little dial. It goes from zero to ten. Uh, right now I have it on a middle number, which is five, and you can see the numbers right there. I don't know if you're able to catch your... Uh, so, one, when you're looking at the mouthpiece, can visualize the numeric value that they choose, um, which raises and lowers, also su slightly and subtly, the rails on each side of the mouthpiece, um, which, once again, uh, we, we discuss modern technology in 2013, it still to this day floors me that, that this mouthpiece was deemed non-functioning and also deemed, um, you know, it, w just, it basically wouldn't work, it could never work. And it was created in 1959. There's only one in existence and you're looking right at it and it sounds and feels great. Uh, what I'd like to do maybe, uh, and I have some assistance here as well, is just play a little bit for you. Why don't I play perhaps uh, some standard repertoire like Eugene Boats's Aria, and just a little bit so you could hear the sound that it produces um, and allows me to produce. So, when I was first told this mouthpiece didn't work, I forget what I played. In fact, I believe it was uh, pictures at an exhibition, and I did the same thing. I put on a number three reed out of my case. That's what I, my uh, reed of choice uh, for classical playing, and that's what came out. So, I know several players said the mouthpiece doesn't work, but as you can hear, it works fine. Um, what I'd like to do now is maybe play something a little more technical so you could hear those aspects of it so it's not just, um, you know, I mean the mouthpiece functions and, and can do basically anything and everything you want. It can, you know, the articulation is fine on it. Uh, to say that it's me creating this sound but you know other people that have tried it have had no problems as well so it's just it's just very very interesting that's where I find that this aspect of having a dial to alter the rails a little bit comes into play uh, I'm just going to maybe you'll hear a difference maybe you won't I'm just going to put it from a five to a six right now and just hear if you uh, sense or hear any difference for me, it may be more internal. The articulation might be a little firmer, a little lighter, I'm not sure. But it does make a difference to the player, and that's what I find that's very attractive uh, about it. So right now, I don't know if you heard it, uh, we're in a very vibrant, beautiful hall here at Mixon Hall and Cleveland Institute of Music. Um, that was a little crisper for me. So just that one notch gave me a little more, I don't want to say the term resistance in a negative way, but gave me a little more uh, substance to the reed. So that's all happening internally with the, just a simple one turn of this dial. And as you can see, it, it, it happens. It's not, it's not difficult to do. It's very light and natural. It's like you would be opening up a, you know, can of Pepsi or Coke, no big deal. Um, moving on, 
Uh, what I'd like to do maybe, why don't I play a little bit of, um, I like to do standard repertoire for all you saxophonists out there, maybe some of the um, Glasnov concerto, just so you can see some of its, uh, how it functions during technically proficient passages as saxophonists that we have to deal with. Well, I hope this DVD has been informative for all of you. It's been really a pleasure to present this for you. And I'm sure there's several questions that you may have that I personally did not address, or um, you may want to uh, further investigate. I do suggest visiting uh, dejocs.com, or feel free to even visit my website. I'm always uh, open to emails or questions of uh, you know, anything that might be on your mind. Um, you know, I love all you fellow saxophonists out there, so it would really be a pleasure to be of any assistance if I can. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, feel free to investigate some of these wonderful new products. I mean, the strap has been around for a long time, and I was very happy I could kind of give it a more thorough explanation. But now this is something rare, and it's really been a pleasure and honor to uh, get to know it more and more daily. It offers a lot of different uh, aspects and potential uh, to the saxophonist and we're all looking for things to make it a little bit easier to be the musicians that we are. So uh, on behalf of the DeJocs family and company, thank you so much for having me today. It's been my pleasure and I look forward to hopefully concertizing for you sometime soon. Thank you so much.